Okay, so now we're gonna translate this same star that we've been working on into a cuttlefish pattern, okay? And this is just to get you to understand that when you're book matching a mold, it doesn't really matter what your master part is, as long as it's drafted on one side and flat on the other. You can get away with whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. So, this is a cuttlefish bone, okay? A cuttlefish bone is just a porous calcium carbonate that's in the back of this little squid-like thing called a cuttlefish. It's covered in chromatophores, can swim around, change its color and texture, super smart, super cute, and super delicious. So they tend to um, die, and these wash up on the shore of coastal regions like Australia, and you can pick them up off the beach and buy them at the pet store, and birds like to clean their teeth on them, so usually you're looking in the bird section if you're trying to find a cuttlefish. You can also order them online. But uh, this is one of the most ancient forms of casting because calcium carbonate is like foam, right? So the cuttlefish will inflate this with air for ballast so it can actually, you know, float at different heights, very much like a swim bladder. But because it's a porous calcium carbonate, it's basically a fireproof-ish beer cozy. So it's just gonna hold everything at the same temperature. It's gonna have reasonable flow dynamics if it hasn't been sitting in the humid rain or uh, atmosphere. And what we're gonna do first is we're just going to cut this down the middle to make sure that we can get two clean parts because occasionally these little guys, as delicious as they are, will be swimming and somebody will take a bite out of them. And that can be a bit of a problem. So I'm just using a hacksaw. You can use a jeweler's saw. I wouldn't use a Japanese saw. It might work, but you'd want a fine tooth, so maybe a crosscut Japanese saw. But we're just trying to saw through the keratin, which is this little back part here. Super tough and thick. But the, uh, the core is very, very soft and will cut very easily. So the first thing we're going to do is cut through the cuttlefish backbone, right? Clean up our debris. And it's going to smell like dried powdered squid bone and hair while you're working. So your cats are going to love you, but maybe your spouse or partner may not. So the first thing I want to do is get this nice and flat. And you can see I've got a piece of sandpaper and I'm just working in a circle. You can do it figure eight, it doesn't matter. What you're trying to do is get your cuttlefish clean enough. Let's see if we can get the uh, camera to show that. So that there isn't this signature groove because that's gonna end up being a leak in the casting where the metal flows out. So we wanna get this to one nice uniform plane. going. So once again, let's get that in focus. You can see we're close to a flat plane. And you can see when I brush this material off, you get a texture, okay? And that texture is one of the signs that you've been using cuttlefish, but it gives a wood grain texture to whatever your master part is. And for a long time, that texture was not sought after. That was something that people did not want. And so, what they would do is they would press their part into the mold after it was freshly sanded and remove it and not brush it out. But to accentuate that texture, what we're gonna do now is brush out the groove. So here we are looking at the cuttlefish and it's nice and smooth, freshly sanded. And then when we brush out the remaining dust, You can see this lovely cuttlefish bone texture. Okay. 
So now we're going to do that again with the opposite side. And I think you can get the pattern here where we're book matching everything and then just pouring metal in from one side to see how the casting worked, right? But we're going to do something different every time just to show you what works, what doesn't. So again, we're just sanding the second part down flush. Okay. I'm going to brush that out. And this one's got a heavier texture. Let's see if we can get that to focus. So you can see it's a heavier texture. So we'll keep that for the back to really emphasize it. And then I'll press the star into this finer texture. And as we go deeper in, those grooves should show up a little more strongly. So at this point, we have to decide where we want our sprue to go. And so we're gonna have our button and our sprue come in from the top, again, to that peak point of the star. So I'm just going to gently press the star in, and I'm rocking it back and forth in all five axes of the star points. And then once that's done, you can see there's a little tiny star, right? And then I'm going to brush out the remaining dust tap out the back, and then place the star back in, and continue to rock it back and forth to register in the cuttlefish. Okay, so you can also carve the cuttlefish directly, but what we're gonna do right now is try and get that impression copied, and I'm gonna switch to time-lapse because this will take a little bit of time. 